Hi everyone, this is Carolise, and today we're going to be talking about dum -dum 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 the best virtual collaboration tools out there for business analysts. And these are the tools that I think would be very useful given this time of crisis and pandemics because we're doing so much virtual meetings and other things. So I want to share with you some of these tools, which I'll get into right after this. So I did a video before on software tools for business analysts, and I'll put the link right here where I went through and showed you some of the tools that are common among business analysts and even project managers as well. It's not exclusive to business analysts. But in this video, I'm focusing on the virtual tools, but there are some tools that are very common already that I think you already know, so I don't need to go into them. And those are Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Cisco WebEx and some of these other just online meeting tools. I think we've all been using them at some form if you're in the corporate world at all. Especially Teams, I really do like. I've been using Teams more since the pandemic. We used it before just for chats, but now that we've had the pandemic and everybody's home, we're using it more for video meetings and stuff like that. And one of the things I love about Teams is that it's so integrated into everything else. You can have your documents, you have your videos, you have your chats. It's very, very ingrained in how we're working already. So I think that's a good addition to the Microsoft suite. So I'm not gonna go into these tools because they're already so common. I wanna show you things that you may not know exist out there. And the first one I wanna talk about is the Miro board. So Miro board is very, very useful. It's more like a whiteboarding collaboration tool, but of course you can do other things such as mind maps, you can do Kanban boards, you can just have general ideation sessions, brainstorming. It's quite a very versatile and useful tool. And I think it's becoming probably one of my more favorite, uh, my most favorite uh, collaboration tools for online. And I'm also gonna jump in and show you my mirror board and some of the things I've been able to do in mirror board as well. So this is Miro, my Miro board, and it's literally just the, the canvas. And when you first start to create your board, you can pick a template that you want. In this case, I have had some other things on here already that I'm just going to show you around. So you have this menu right here. And these are templates, you can add text, you can add sticky notes, you can add shapes, arrows, you can draw, you know, comment create a frame and I'll tell you what those are in a second. So I have already created some, just some sample stuff. So this is, for example, my workflow. Um, maybe I was doing some kind of maybe user profile and I wanted to just grab some ideas for each profile on this kind of, you know, design, this layout. And some of these are coming from the templates that they have already set up. So you have a place to start. And you can literally have as much as you want. As you see, I'm scrolling all the way across. There is a lot of options here. You can just create things and, you know, zoom in, zoom out, see how much you've got. You've got a lot of space to work on this canvas, right? So you can zoom into the level that you want. You can, you know, oops, I think I just moved something. Let's not move that, right? So we have that kind of template. You can also do mind mapping which this is a template that comes with it, but you can obviously create your own. Um, this is like a Kanban board style. If you wanted to run your, your sprints Kanban board with that, you can just doodle and write things freehand. There's a lot of options in here for a variety of different things. You can just create sticky notes of different things that you want to make note of. This is very good for whiteboarding and just ideation sessions and coming up with ideas in a free form kind of way. Um, here's another layout of some kind. I don't even remember what I downloaded that for. But there's a lot of options in here, right? You can do a lot of different things. And one of the things I really like about this that's very easy is I can um, upload images. I can do icon search, um, URLs. I mean, there's a lot of options. Let's say I wanted to 
paste in an iframe, I could do that, a web page. I could do um, icon finder. Let's say I just want to see, I don't know, a file, logo, you know, I can search. So I don't have to leave my mirror board to do anything. I can do everything I need from within my mirror board. Let's say I wanted this PDF. It just brings it in for me. And I can, you know, move this around, change it, do or whatever I want with it. If it plays into the whole story, I'm trying to tell with the board. Of course, you can also have other people collaborate on this. So let's say I'm in here. Somebody else can join in and you'd see their mouse moving and you see where they're typing. So it's very collaborative. And of course, you can do video as well. So you can see the person as they're talking about stuff, as they're changing things. So you're seeing them, you're hearing them, and you're watching them actually interact with the board. And then there are some additional plugins that you can do. Um, you can get apps. I think with the free version, this is all you get. But if you were to go to add more apps, I think you could upgrade to different things. You can do integration to Teams. You can do to Jira. You can do all this stuff if you have the paid version. So there's a lot of extensibility with this. Slack, Asana. I mean, it goes on and on. Envision, all kinds of stuff. So it's very, very versatile, very useful. Um, I like it a lot, especially if you're doing like user journey mapping and you want to kind of build that out, build out that flow. It's very good if you're doing ideation sessions and brainstorming and workshop in a collaborative virtual way. I think this is a great tool for that as well. And I love the fact that there's just so much options with it, you know, so much. Um, it's so free form. It's so it's a great whiteboarding tool that I think, you know, we should take advantage of. The free version is great. You get two boards with it, I think. I mean, for me, that's enough. <laughs> um, it's something I would definitely propose that you could ask the company to pay for because it's definitely worth it. The other one I want to talk to you about is Google Jamboard. So this one is relatively new to me. But I was introduced to it, and it's pretty cool. It's actually a collaborative interactive whiteboard, kind of similar to a mirror board, but of course it's backed by Google, it's you know, created by Google. So I'm going to go play the video now and show you what it's all about. And the way to get to Jamboard is by simply typing jamboard.google.com. Now once you navigate to the URL jamboard.google.com, Google Jamboard is open. Now it's automatically going to load the Jam files. Now these files can be created by you or shared with you by someone else using Jamboard or the Jamboard app. As we can click on the share button and we can share these jams with other users. So as you can see, it is now private, but I can invite people to collaborate on this jam. This is the same way you would work with other Google G Suite apps. So let's just leave it for now. Now on my jam, I have a number of different things I can do. I can create any of these elements down the left. And my most favorite element is the one down below, which is a sticky note. So when I click on this sticky note, I can create a new note. Now the select tool allows me to move elements around my jam board. I can even twist them around a little bit and I can make them bigger or smaller. So I can enlarge this just like this. Now it's very easy to switch between these frames by using that frame bar at the top. Now another tool we have in Jamboard is down here and it's the pen tool. And I can then scribble or write on top of my Jamboard. Download your file as a PDF or to save just this one frame as an image. Now let's go ahead and click on save frame as an image. As you can see when I open the image, I have a nice image of just my first frame. So there we go, this is Jamboard. It's a great collaborative environment. You can collaborate in real time with people on web, mobile, iOS, Android. It does not matter which device or operating system they use. You can easily work on Jamboard. The other one I wanna talk about is Slido. So Slido is quite an interesting tool. It's a lot more for Q&A for polling, like if you have a big group and people might not want to respond individually, but they'll answer to a question in a poll or something. So it's very useful. Um, I'm going to play the video for you to see what it's about. But the, the interesting thing about them too is that it's sli.do. That's how you get to it, which is an interesting way that they made their URL, their name. So that's cool. 
All right, let me play the video and see what it's all about. Hi everyone, Susanna from Slido here. Running remote meetings and webinars can be challenging, especially when it comes to how you engage and interact with your online participants. You can use Slido and give your online audience a voice by giving them a chance to ask questions and participate in polls and quizzes. Here is a simple setup of Slido for your remote meeting. There are three options, so let's start with the first one. Sharing Slido screen. Open a new tab, go to Slido Admin and click Present in Full Screen. This will display the Slido holding screen with joining instructions. Your participants can then scan the code with their phones or just go to slido.com and type in your event code. In the Slido Present mode, you can find a control panel on your lower left. From there, you can activate polls, move to the next one, switch to Q&A, and manage questions like highlight and mark a question as answered. Then open your presentation and start presenting full screen. Once you have Slido and your slides ready, open your video conferencing platform. Start your call and begin sharing your desktop. You can use Alt-Tab or Swipe on Mac to switch between Slido and your presentation. Let's take a look at the second option. This is a good option if you have another person helping you with Slido or you want to use your smartphone as a remote control. First, download and install Switcher from Slido.com slash Switcher. Log in with your Slido credentials and select your event. Go to Slido.com on your secondary device like a phone and do the same. From there you can activate polls or display questions that will cover your slides. Then just start a video conferencing call. Share your desktop and use Switcher to display Slido on top of your content. Let's move to the last one. You can also integrate Slido with Google Slides and run everything from one place. Go to slido.com slash Google Slides and follow the instructions to install an add-on and an extension. Once installed, you can create polls, quizzes, and add Q&A from the sidebar. Then just launch your video conferencing tool. Start sharing your desktop and start your presentation. Your polls and quizzes will be automatically activated once you get to the right slide. A small note to add, we are currently working on Microsoft PowerPoint integration. You can join the waitlist at slido.com slash PowerPoint. Also, if you'd like to join the waitlist for our Zoom integration, head to slido.com slash Zoom. And that's it. The other tool is Mural. So Mural, again, is like another whiteboarding tool. Um, it's a digital workspace for visual collaboration. I, I think it's pretty cool too, and I want you guys to see what it's about. So I'm gonna play the video again for you to hear and see how it works. Mural is an online whiteboard built to help you design together and solve problems visually. A mural is like a giant canvas that can be used in your browser or on one of our touch-ready apps. You can add all kinds of content, like sticky notes, shapes, images, videos, links, and even drag and drop files directly onto the canvas. Mural also works with many integrations to create a seamless experience across platforms. Organize your content in different rooms, private rooms to departments of your team, and open rooms for the entire workspace. So those are the tools, people, of what you can use out there for your group collaborations, your workshops, your brainstorming sessions, your ideation sessions, just to give you additional resources at your disposal because every tool that you use, some of it might have limitations. Like, for example, we love Teams, but you can't have that kind of group collaboration in teams the way you can in mirror board for example so everything has its own advantages so i'm just telling you what's out there that i know of that could benefit you of course you can choose to use them or not so one of the things i also wanted to call your attention to was just facilitating virtual meetings as well because you know this is a different environment than if you're sitting face to face so one thing i would encourage is having a virtual coffee break this is 
starting the meeting maybe 50 minutes before because you're not seeing each other. You want to probably have like a little chit chat, you know, run a little joke, talk about something fun, you know, catch up on the weekend activities or something, you know, de-stressing, right? Because you're going to go into a meeting that's going to be very heavy. And so if you can have 50 minutes of just catching up kind of the water cooler experience that you would have had if you were in the office that that sometimes helps to kind of break the ice get people in the mind frame of you know working together again you know just just a nice start to the meeting so you can do that 50 minutes before the meeting to get everybody all warmed up the other thing i would encourage is to go on camera right show your face Sometimes people, you know, they don't want to show their face because they don't want people looking at their background in their house, you know, <laughs> their kids could be running around and it's just a mess. So they don't really want to show it. And here I am doing a video where I'm not showing my face and I'm telling you to show your face, but you know, you've seen my face in other videos. Um, the thing is, because you're not seeing each other every time, you know, at work, you don't have to show your face all the time. You don't have to go on the camera all the time. But once in a while, turn the camera on so they can see you, you know, get that personal touch as much as you can back into their meetings. The other thing is to disclose your environment. This is something I do a lot because I have a dog and I have a child who's five years old and she will spontaneously jump into the meeting <laughs> and she needs my attention for something or the dog might start barking. So I always start off by saying, hey guys, you know, I'm, I have a five-year-old and I have a dog that might just start barking. Just wanna let you guys know. So there's this caveat at the beginning. So if it happens during the meeting, they kind of already have this, you know, expectation. We all are working from home. So there's more um, leniency towards that kind of thing. When you're having these big meetings with different people, maybe at executive level clients and stuff, they, everybody understands. But not everybody has that situation. Some people don't have kids at home, they don't have pets, and they live in their own world. They don't even remember that people live like that. So, you know, it's just, even though people are sympathetic, it's still a good practice to just disclose that, hey, my environment can be a little bit unstable, and, you know, let them know. For example, if you have your neighbor mowing the lawn outside, and you're like, all this noise, <laughs> right? So you just want to say, hey, there's a truck outside, you know, somebody's doing construction, just want to warn you guys that there might be some noise. I'll put myself on mute, but if I have to talk, there might be noise in the background. So things like that, you know, just to get everybody aware of what's going on with you. And then the other thing I would say is just be happy. Be a happy professional. So what I mean by this is smile when you're talking because people can hear the smile in your voice. Um, and just don't be grumpy. Like there are people I meet with them and I know them personally from the office and they're already grumpy in the office. And then when you hear them grumpy on the phone, it just, your, your mind starts to think of their grumpy face <laughs> when you are in the office. <laughs> and it's just an unpleasant experience. So just don't be a grumpy person. Even if that's your personality, you're not happy about something in the meeting. Don't let that carry over. The, the, the airwaves, you know, like try to be as pleasant as professional as you can, you know, be clear, be firm. People can't read your body language because you're not seeing you. So your voice has to carry a lot. And if your voice is carrying this attitude, it's going to be worse, right? So try not to be like too silent. Like somebody asks a question, you're silent for a long time. There's a long pause. And then you answer with attitude like this. Let's just not do that. And when people do that to you, you have, you have to be, you know, happy. You have to be a happy professional. You're not going to let anybody bring you down. You're not going to let anybody change your attitude. You're going to be happy because this is a very stressful time for everyone. And so if you let the word stress translate over the, the meeting, <laughs> over the internet, it just makes it even worse because you're not seeing anyone that you can physically go talk to. You can't run to your boss and, you know, you know, run to their office and have a chat with them. It's just not the same. There are things that are just not the same. So I just implore you to be a happy professional, not let anybody bring you down, not be, you know, not be the person bringing other people down for sure, but just be happy, smile, and remember that this, this too shall pass, <laughs> right? We're all gonna, we all gonna get through this together. So these are my tips for virtual collaboration tools. I hope you found it useful. Please check out my website at carolise.com. Support me by watching the videos, by liking the video. 
by subscribing and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.